Good morning, Excellencies, friends, colleagues. I am delighted to welcome you on behalf of the International Service for Human Rights and my own organization, Amnesty International, to the 2024 Human Rights Council pledging event. Today's event provides candidates for membership of the Human Rights Council the opportunity to present their vision for membership and the priorities they will work on if elected. It's an opportunity to question candidates on their human rights records and pledges. I'd like to start by extending a special thanks to the permanent mission of the Republic of Bulgaria, who is sponsoring this event. As you know, these organize, organizing these kinds of events are never easy and their support was essential. Our heartfelt thanks go to Her Excellency Ambassador Letzara Stoeva and her hardworking team, in particular, Mr. Dimitrov, for his invaluable support during the organization process. Our organizations are also grateful to Mr. Abdul Tia, Chief of Service at the Office of the High Commissioner for Human Rights for moderating this event for us today and to his team for supporting us in the preparation. Amnesty and ISHR have been proud to organize this event for 14 years. We are delighted that this year, 13 candidates agreed to join the event and all regions are therefore represented. Elections to the Human Rights Council are often not as competitive as we would hope. Unfortunately, all too often, close states are the norm. We welcome the competitive nature of the Asia Pacific group and strongly encourage other regions to be inspired by its example. The next two and a half hours will provide an opportunity for dialogue between member states and civil society and is an important exercise in transparency and accountability. We are very happy to see, once again, a large number of attendees, including civil society and candidate states from across the world and different time zones joining us, facilitated by its online nature. On that note, before we start, just to share with you some practical information. This is a virtual multilingual meeting. Today, there is live simultaneous interpretation into English, French, and Spanish. To access the interpretation function, all you need to do is click on the interpretation button on the globe icon that you can see on the Zoom toolbar at the bottom of your screen. Then all you need to do is click on the language that you want to listen to. Interpretation is always a few seconds behind, so please keep that in mind. You will also see detailed instructions for interpretation in the chat if you missed what I just said. If you can't hear the interpretation, please write to the host by private chat on Zoom and we'll do our best to support you. Please note that attendees cannot take the floor, but can use the Q&A function on Zoom to ask questions to the panelists and the moderator will give more details on that in a bit. This event is recorded and the recordings will be made available on the ISHR YouTube page at the end of the event. I take this opportunity to thank the team of interpreters supporting us today. Their contribution is key to language diversity and inclusion. Finally, let me reiterate something that we say every year at this event. The Human Rights Council's success depends on its members and their readiness to fully implement the council's mandate set out in J Assembly <clears throat> Resolution 6251. That resolution recognizes the importance of engagement and full cooperation with all stakeholders in the council's work. And most importantly, that member states shall uphold the highest standards in the promotion and the protection of human rights. Without further ado, let me wish all the state candidates good luck for this event and also, of course, good luck for the upcoming elections. Mr. Moderator, the floor is yours. Thank you, uh, dear Shorin Tedros, and um, thank you. I would like to thank the organizers of today's event, Amnesty International and the International Service for Human Rights, the event co-sponsor, Bulgaria. Excellencies, distinguished delegates, dear colleagues. I'm delighted to welcome you to the, 20, uh, to the 2024 Human Rights Council pledging event. Today's event provides candidates for membership of the Human Rights Council for the term 2025-2027 an opportunity to present their vision for membership and the priorities they will work towards if elected. It is also 
an opportunity for stakeholders to ask candidates questions about their human rights records and pledges. This event has become part of the annual calendar of events in New York and Geneva. OHSR is pleased to have been associated with it for several years, and I'm delighted to continue this tradition and opportunity for dialogue between stakeholders and an important exercise of promoting transparency and accountability. All 19 candidate states were invited to join us today. I wish to extend sincere thanks to the 12 candidates, the 13, sorry, 13 candidates who accepted the invitation to join us today, namely Colombia, Cyprus, Czechia, Iceland, Marshall Island, Mexico, North Macedonia, Qatar, Republic of Korea, Spain, Switzerland, Thailand, and the Democratic Republic of the Congo. I welcome their willingness to engage and thank them for approaching the exercise in the spirit of transparency and accountability. Seven candidates either de declined to participate or, do, or did not respond to the invitation, namely Benin, Bolivia, Ethiopia, Gambia, Kenya, and Saudi Arabia. Let me say just a few words on the format of today's event. In the opening segment, each candidate states have been asked to outline in 90 seconds what they hope to achieve through its membership, both at the national and international levels. In the second segment, we'll open the floor for questions for the audience. Questions will be taken from both Twitter using the hashtag hash dash, uh, uh, HRC pledging and the Zoom Q&A. We will be taking general questions directed to all states, as well as questions directed at, spe at specific states, including those participating in today's event and those that are not joining us today. Questions posed through the Q&A function can be liked by other audience members, so the organizers can get a sense of questions with interest from others. Invitation. In the second segment, to ensure the, the greatest opportunity for engagement between candidates, states, and the audience, we urge candidates to be short and concise in, in your responses, not exceeding two to three minutes. Representative exceeding three minutes per, per, per response will be gently reminded to wrap up. Our aim is to have a rich and dynamic discussion. As there will like be more questions shared than time available, any questions shared that are not asked during this event will be collated and forwarded to the respective candidates and also posted online. Before we turn to the candidate, states for the opening statements. I would like to give the floor to the co-sponsor for some opening remarks. I invite Her Excellency Ambassador Lazareka Stoeva, permanent representative of the Republic of Bulgaria to the UN in New York to make some brief opening remarks. Ambassador, you have the floor. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you for organizing today's event, which Bulgaria is uh, honored and happy to co-sponsor. I would also like to extend special thanks to the candidate countries for the term 2025-2027 that are here today. It is never easy to be part of this discussion, but nothing about upholding human rights is easy anyway. Every new election to the Human Rights Council bring its uh, brings its fresh perspectives and ideas. With uh, these dynamics, while these dynamics may involve the core commitment to human rights and their universal, indivisible, and interrelated nature must remain steadfast and unwavering. 
The Council itself provides an essential forum where states and stakeholders can engage in dialogues, share best practices, and address human rights challenges collectively. Membership in the Human Rights Council signifies a country's deep commitment to upholding and promoting human rights standards, setting an example for others to follow. To remain relevant and effective, the Human Rights Council must actively engage with all stakeholders and must listen to all voices, particularly from younger generations and marginalized communities whose perspectives are crucial in shaping a more inclusive and just world. As we focus on the pledges made by candidate countries, it is imperative to remember that these commitments are not mere statements. They must translate into concrete actions. We view every candidacy as a step towards greater accountability and self-reflection in the field of human rights, because regardless of its success, each candidacy represents a commitment to progress. Civil society organizations play a crucial and indispensable role in ensuring that Human Rights Council members uphold their commitments. By closely monitoring actions and decisions, these organizations help guarantee that member states remain true to their pledges and genuinely advance human rights. Non-governmental organizations also play a key role in raising awareness amongst the public and policy makers alike and in driving further action. Bulgaria as a member of the Human Rights Council currently is dedicated to playing an active role in shaping the global human rights agenda. We use this privilege to advocate for stronger international mechanisms to protect human rights defenders, ensure accountability for violations and support initiatives that promote inclusivity and justice. This year, Bulgaria has also joined the Global Coalition for Social Justice, as we firmly believe that this coalition can be a powerful driver for, uh, driver for reducing inequalities and fostering social progress. As we embark on the next few hours of dialogue and exchange between candidate countries and civil society representatives, let, me remain, um, let us all remain committed to the principles that guide our work. The responsibilities of the Human Rights Council members have never been more critical. In the face of the many challenges and human rights violations that the world confronts today, it is essential that we remain vigilant, courageous, and unwavering in our resolve to protect and promote human rights. Thank you all, and I look forward to the discussion and wish all our candidates every success at the elections. Thank you. Thank you, Ambassador Steva. We'll now begin our discussion with the candidates. I will give each candidate the opportunity to state what they hope to achieve through its Human Rights Council membership, both at the national and international levels. Candidates have 90 seconds for this initial statement. Given the number of intervention we want to facilitate today, I urge each state to please stay within the time limit. Please note that I will be respectfully interrupting intervention that go over. We will proceed in alphabetical order. First, I would like to invite the distinguished representative of Colombia. I don't know if he joined us. Um, His Excellency Ambassador Gustavo Gallon permanent representative of Colombia to the UN in Geneva to take the floor. Colombia has ratified or acceded to all nine international, core international human rights treaties and three out of four related protocols. However, it has not accepted all individual complaint mechanism. It has issued a standing invitation to UN special procedures, but hasn't accepted all country visits request. Colombia has cases of alleged reprisals highlighted in the Secretary General's report in the last 10 years, and it has paid its UN contribution in a timely manner in 2023. Colombia was not previously a council member. Ambassador Gallon, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Thierry. You said I have uh, 90 seconds? Please. And there is another tour because I, I understood I, I had uh, three minutes. This is in in in, uh, in a further. Ambassador, 
do, you have 90 seconds for this, the response to this question. When it gets to the second session section of the event, you then have three minutes for responses to those questions. For this mm -hmm. initial question, it's a 90 seconds. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you very much. So I will, I will speak in Spanish if you allow. We fully register the importance of this event with a spirit of openness. We consider that our brothers and sisters in Colombia merit representation at this level. And the defense of Colombian rights is of the utmost importance. We stand for fundamental human rights which are a underpinning of social justice and the elementary rights of Colombians of all stripes. We maintain the right to life and the right to decent living standards of all Colombians. And this is a commitment which is strong in enabling us to represent uh, all stripes of politics in this country. We stand for fundamental freedoms and human rights, and therefore are delighted to participate in this uh, pledging event to be able to guarantee those rights and freedoms which are required. Colombo is a country which is open to all strains, and our present representation will always stand for equal rights. And for the upcoming period, we are pledging our support for these values. We will coordinate to apply all proceedings and special uh, regimes. So we commit internationally and nationally to follow up on our pledges in all circumstances to maintain dialogue and openness and conflict resolution principles uh, according to the Charter of the United Nations Law International Commitments and Obligations. Commitments which are irreducible. And this will be the case for our support of all human rights. Um, as mentioned, Benin did not respond to the invitation to participate in this event. Benin has ratified or acceded to all nine core international human rights treaties and the related protocols. However, it has not accepted all individual complaints mechanism. It has issued a standing invitation to the UN special procedures, but has not accepted all country visit requests. Benin has cases of alleged reprisal highlighted in the Secret Secretary General's report in the last 10 years and it has paid its UN contribution in a timely manner in 2023. Benin was previously a council member in the terms starting in 2011 and 2022. As mentioned, Bolivia also declined the invitation to participate in this event. Bolivia has ratified or acceded to all nine core international human rights treaties and the related protocols. However, it has not accepted all individual complaints mechanism. It has issued a standing invitation to UN special procedures, but has not accepted all country visits requests. Bolivia has cases of alleged reprisals highlighted in the Secretary General's report in the last 10 years, and it, it has paid its UN contribution in, timely, in a timely manner in 2023. Bolivia was previously a council, council member in the, in the terms starting in 2007, 2015, and 2021. Next, I would like to give the floor to the distinguished representative of Cyprus, Ambassador Olympia Neoclus, Neoclius, uh, permanent representative of Cyprus to the UN in Geneva, to take the floor. Cyprus has ratified or acceded to seven out of nine core international 
human rights treaties, and all related protocols. However, it has not accepted all individual complaints mechanism. It has issued a standing invitation to the UN special procedures, but has not accepted all country visits request. Cyprus has also cases of alleged reprisals highlighted in the Secretary General's report in the last 10 years and has paid its UN contribution in a timely manner in 2023. Cyprus was not previously a council member. Ambassador Nicolaus, you have the floor. Sorry Thank for you. the presentation. I'm, I'm really sorry, Her Excellency. Thank you. Dear Rob, let me thank the organizers of our event today, which allows us to broaden the space of discussing human rights. It is with pleasure and pride that I'm here to discuss with you this afternoon Cyprus's first ever candidacy to the Human Rights Council. Cyprus's history has taught us all too well the value of human rights and the cost of their absence. Our historical experience and our present forge our deep commitment to peace, security, development, human dignity, equality, and justice. I would like to pledge our engagement to work with all in advancing effective multilateralism with the UN at its center. Cyprus has been able to consistently demonstrate our commitment to human rights as a member of the European Union and as an active participant in the Human Rights Council as an observer. Our contribution so far and our vision to become a member are underpinned by our experiences and our belief that small states have an essential, indeed an indispensable role to play and can have a significant impact on the global human rights landscape. If elected, we pledge to work tirelessly with a particular focus on economic, social and cultural rights, the rights of the child, achieving gender equality and finding, fighting gender-based violence. We're cognizant of the great respons responsibility that Human Rights Council membership brings. We look forward to serving and we maintain our unyielding belief in the power of human rights to transform lives. I thank you. Thank you, uh, uh, the Ambassador. Um, I would like to um, remind, it would be great, I would like to call uh, all the um, candidates to please speak slowly because to facilitate uh, the interpretation. Um, I would al also like to remind attendees that they can submit questions using the q a function on, on Zoom. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> um, I would like to invite now the distinguished representative of Czechia, His Excellency Ambassador Vaclav Balek, Permanent Representative of Czechia to the UN in Geneva to take the floor. Czechia has ratified or acceded to eight out of nine core international human rights treaties and all related protocols. However, it has not accepted all individual complaints mechanism. It has issued a standing invitation to the UN special procedures and has accepted all country visits requests. Czechia has no case of unresolved reprisal highlighted in the Secretary General's report in the last 10 years, and it has paid its UN contribution in a timely manner in 2023. Czechia was previously a council member in the terms starting in 2006, 2011, 2019, and from May 2022 to December 2023. Ambassador Balek, you have the floor. Thank you very much uh, for the floor and uh, good morning uh, to New York and good afternoon to Geneva. My colleagues, the active promotion and protection of human rights is one of the cornerstones of our domestic and foreign policy. We are historically located between different spheres of interests and are very Existence depends on the international rules based order with human rights at its core. Our story is a human rights story, after all. Over the past 100 years, we became an independent Czechoslovak state after breaking free from an empire. Then we were hit by two regimes seeking full control of our people, and yet we managed to begin a new chapter as a free democratic country during the Velvet Revolution in 1989. 
Though history in mind, we have a strong sense of responsibility for human rights everywhere and for everyone. We have regularly served on the Council since 2006. 2023, the Czech Republic privileged to preside over the Human Rights Council for the first time in our history. As a member of the Council, we will continue to advocate the strengthening of the existing human rights architecture. The Republic will continue providing a comprehensive support to Ukraine, as well as to the civil society, activists, journalists at risk, inter alia in Russia and Belarus. We will never tire of repeating the names of, of unjustly jailed political prisoners awaiting their release. We will remain committed to promoting fundamental rights, namely to equal participation in political and public affairs, freedom of peaceful assembly and association, freedom of expression and from information and others. We are convinced that digital technologies can be a good servant by Edma Master. Therefore, we will strive to ensure that the international legal order functions in a new digital reality as well. At home, we aim conducting processes, processes leading to establishing the national rights institution or eliminating the condition of sterilization for legal gender recognition. The public has supported almost 86% of the recommendations received uh, during the fourth UPR cycle. We remain dedicated to their fulfillment be it the rights of the children, women, migrants, Roma population, or human rights in the environmental context. I think. Thank you, Ambassador uh, Balik. Uh, I would like to invite uh, the distinguished representative of the Democratic Republic of the Congo, His Excellency Ambassador Zenongai Mukongo, permanent representative of the Democratic Republic of the Congo to the UN in New York, to take the floor. The DRC has certified or acceded to seven out of nine core in international human rights treaties and three out of four related protocols. However, it has not accepted all individual compliance mechanism. It has not issued a sending invitation to UN special procedures and has not accepted all country visit requests. The DRC has cases of unresolved reprisals highlighted in the Secretary General's report in the last 10 years, it has not paid its UN contribution in a timely manner in 2023. The DRC was previously a council member in the term starting in 2020, in 2018. Ambassador Mukongo, you have the floor. Just to step in, the DRC did accept the invitation to join this event but they haven't actually shown up for the event so i'll move through them for now and we'll update you if they do show up during the course of the event thank you thank you um now uh, as mentioned hop did not um Ethiopia did not respond to invitation to participate in this uh, event Ethiopia has ratified or acceded to seven out of nine core international human rights treaties and three out of four related protocols. However, it has not accepted all individual complaints mechanism. It has not issued a standing invitation to UN special procedures and has not accepted all country visits requests. Ethiopia has cases of unresolved reprisals highlighted in the Secretary General's report in the last 10 years, and it has paid its UN contribution in a timely manner in 2023, Ethiopia has previously was previously a council member in the terms starting in 2013 and 2016. As mentioned um, earlier, the Gambia did not respond to, to the invitation to participate in this event. The Gambia has ratified or acceded to all core international human rights treaties and three out of four related protocols, and it has not accepted all individual complaints mechanism. It has not issued a standing invitation to UN special procedures and hasn't accepted all country visits requests. Gambia has cases of alleged reprisals highlighted in the Secretary General's report in the last 10 years, and it has paid its UN contribution in a timely manner in 2023. 
the Gambia was previously a council member in the term starting in 2022. I would like to invite the distinguished representative of Iceland, His Excellency Ambassador Einar Gunnarsson, permanent representative of Iceland to the UN in Geneva to take the floor. Iceland has ratified or acceded to seven out of nine core international human rights treaties and all related protocols. However, it has not accepted all individual complaints mechanism. It has issued a standing invitation to UN special procedures and has accepted all country visits requests. Iceland has no cases of unresolved reprisals highlighted in the Secretary General's report in the last 10 years, and it has paid its UN contribution in a timely manner in 2023. Iceland was previously a council member between 13 July 2018 and 31st December 2019. Ambassador Gunnarsson, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Tioi, for moderating the session and giving me the floor. And thank you, Amnesty, ISHR, and Bulgaria for organizing and co-sponsoring this event. At, uh, as time is limited, let me dive right into the substance. As a member of the Human Rights Council, Iceland will aim to drive action on, on a broad range of council activities and strengthen the promotion and protection of human rights nationally and internationally. First, Iceland will work cross-regionally with civil and with civil society and all stakeholders in the spirit of genuine dialogue and cooperation to advance human rights of all. Building on the universal periodic review, the Council must be willing and able to address human rights situation whenever and wherever they arise, indiscriminately. As a member of the Council, Iceland will engage steadfastly with all UN members on human rights issues. Second, Iceland will place a strong thematic focus on several issues. These include advancing the human rights of women and girls, protecting and promoting the human rights of persons of diverse sociesk, upholding the human rights of children, and addressing the linkages between human rights and the environment. Third, Iceland will continue to support the Office of the High Commissioner for Human Rights and support meaningful coordination and mainstreaming of human rights across the UN system. Last but not least, Iceland will continue to further advance human rights at home by working towards ratifying core international human rights treaties and optional protocols, and by further mainstreaming human rights into policy planning at all levels. I look forward to your questions and comments. Thank you, thank you, Ambassador. As mentioned, um, Kenya did not respond to the invitation to participate in this event. Kenya has ratified or acceded to seven out of nine core international human rights treaties and three out of four related protocols. And it has not accepted all individual complaints mechanism. It has issued a sending invitation to UN special procedures, but has not accepted all country visit requests. Kenya has cases of unresolved reprisals highlighted in the Secretary General's report in the last 10 years, and it has not paid its UN contribution in a timely manner in 2023. Kenya was previously a council member in the terms starting in 2013 and 16. I would like to invite now the distinguished representative of the Marshall Island, His Excellency Samuel K. Lanwi, Deputy Permanent Representative of the Marshall Island to the UN in Geneva to take the floor. Marshall Islands has ratified or acceded to seven out of nine core international human rights treaties and one out of four related protocols, and it has not accepted all individual complaints mechanism. It has issued a sending invitation to UN special procedures, but has not accepted all country visits requests. The Marshall Islands has no cases of unresolved reprisals highlighted in the Secretary General's report in the last 10 years, and it has not paid its UN contribution in a timely manner in 2023. 
the Marshall Islands was previously a council, a council member in the term starting in 2020. Mr. Lanwi, you have the, the floor. Thank you very much. The Marshall Islands is seeking membership on the Human Rights Council for the second time to follow through on what we achieved during our first term. In the interest of time, the full list of our intended voluntary pledges and commitment is contained in our aid memoir dated 29th April this year that was further circulated through GA document A79-74 dated 30th April. But for our intents and purposes this afternoon, I will share a couple of national and international commitments that we hope to achieve during the second HRC membership. At the national level, we aim to we will aim to establish a NMIRF, National Mechanism for Implementation, Reporting and Follow-up, which is one of five pledges that we made during the recent high-level HR 75 event last December. We will also continue implementation of Resolution 5135 to seek meaningful technical assistance and cooperation to address the human rights impacts of our nuclear legacy and facilitate capacity building for our National Nuclear Commission through constructive dialogue and engagement with the HRC, UN agencies, and other stakeholders. At the international level, we will continue championing, championing inclusivity and universality in the Council through our active participation in the contact group on UHRC membership. We we'll also announce cooperation with the support of OHCHR, including attention provided to strengthening of the SITS LDC Voluntary Trust Fund to support participation in the work of the Council. The Marshall Islands strongly believes that the membership of the HRC should reflect the diversity of the UN as a whole, and that all countries, regardless of their size, wealth, or power, should have an equal opportunity to serve as members. We remain committed to advancing human rights given the real challenges we face as frontliners in the climate crisis and the lived reality of our nuclear legacy. Three priorities for which we intend to champion at the forthcoming 57th session. The promotion and protection of human rights in the context of multilateralism requires constant bridge building among states in our considered few. Through cross-regional engagement, initiatives, and ongoing dialogue with states and CSOs alike, the Marshall Islands was able to successfully run two key distinct HRC resolutions in 2021 and 2022. As evident in recent years, LDCs and FITs have brought new perspectives and strengthened the universality of the council. They have made significant contributions to the Council through leading resolutions on important new topics, by serving as members of the Bureau, and even by being elected as President. The absence of such representation in the Council membership is a significant gap that needs to be filled in order to ensure that the voices of the smallest and most vulnerable who are often left unheard, and whose critical needs and priorities are attended to on the margins must be heard loudly, proudly, and clearly. I thank you. Thank you, Mr. 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 Lanwi. And I would like now to invite a distinguished representative of Mexico, His Excellency Ambassador Joel Hernandez Garcia, Under Secretary for Multilateral Affairs and Human Rights to take the floor. Mexico has ratified or acceded to all nine core international human rights treaties and related protocols. However, it has not accepted all individual complaints mechanisms. It has issued a standing invitation to UN special procedures, but it has not accepted all country visits requests. Mexico has cases of unresolved reprisals highlighted in the Secretary General's report in the last 10 years, and it has not paid its contribution in a timely manner in 2023. Mexico was previously a council, council member in the term starting in 2000 in 2006, 2009, 2014, 2018, and 2021. Ambassador Garcia, you have the floor. Muchas gracias, eh, muy buenas tardes. Thank you very much. Distinguished representatives of civil society, I have an international moment. So, first of all, I would like to thank the co sponsors of this uh, event. <laughs> Mexico took on a leadership role in the creation of the Human Rights Council in 2016 with the objective to provide the international system with a mechanism to um, 
create action to promote respect and promote the protection and promotion of human rights in all countries. Mexico is presenting its candidature of the council with an aim to advance and uh, promote the standards for human rights and to continue We can hear you. Perdón, tuve un problema de comunicación. Continúo. We, we have had a communication issue. Mexico is presenting its uh, candidature to the council with an aim to promote uh, human rights and aggressive development of human rights. We are therefore contributing to the development of tools at the disposal of the council of technical assistance. We will continue promoting resolutions on the rights of indigenous peoples, migrants, people with disabilities, and on human rights in the fight against terrorism. Based in our feminist minister policy, we will be promoting human rights and uh, substantive gender equality via innovative initiatives. Our commitment to the international system and to human rights have contributed to the strengthening of national institutions of the rule of law and democracy. Mexico will promote the recommendations of the UPR and the special procedures and make sure that they are oriented to constructive action and that they generate positive change in the exercise of human rights in Mexico and the world. Thank you. Thank you, Ambassador Garcia. I would like now to invite the distinguished representative of the Republic of North Macedonia, Ambassador Teuta Agai Demjaha, the permanent representative of North Macedonia to the UN in Geneva to take the floor. The Republic of North Macedonia has ratified or acceded to seven out of nine core international human rights treaties and all related protocols. However, it has not accepted all individual complaint mechanism. It has issued a sending invitation to UN special procedures, but it has not accepted all country visit requests. North Macedonia has no cases of unresolved reprisals highlighted in the Secretary General's report in the last 10 years, and it has paid its UN contribution in a timely manner in 2023. North Macedonia, was previously a council member in the term in the term starting in 2014. Ambassador Teuta Agai Demjaha, you have the floor. Dear organizers, dear all, thank you for organizing this important event. On behalf of my country, I'm honored to share with all of you the following. North Macedonia will consistently aspire to the full enjoyment of human rights by all people around the world, as well as at home. Pursuing human rights and fundamental freedoms are enshrined to the country's constitution and represent one of the core components of our foreign policy. We are committed to uphold the international standards in the field of human rights, democracy, and the rule of law, and to ensure effective implementation of the international human rights treaties on national level. By respecting human rights, we also strive to contribute to international security, thus preventing or limiting the emergence of any security threats. We will support the strengthening of multilateralism and international cooperation with all member states towards the full realization of the 2030 Agenda. We pledge to further enhance the important role of the Human Rights Council for the mainstreaming of a holistic approach to human rights within the UN system. We will continue to apply this approach in addressing situation of concern and engage constructively with the Office of the High Commissioner for Human Rights and all existing international human rights mechanisms. As a multi-ethnic and multicultural country, we support systematic efforts to sustain and promote the culture of peace, tolerance, non-discrimination, understanding and respect for cultural and ethnic diversity. We will remain focused on the rights of women and children, promoting and safeguarding the rights of persons with disabilities, as well as protecting all individuals against all forms of discrimination and attempts to prevent the exercise of their rights. We will intensify efforts to promote safe, 
clean, healthy, and sustainable environment. Abiding by the basic principles, values, and commitments of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, North Macedonia is committed to honoring principles of universality, indivisibility, and inalienability of human rights of all individuals equally. Thank you. Thank you, Ambassador. I would like to invite uh, now the uh, distinguished representative of Qatar, Her Excellency Ambassador Alia Altani, the permanent representative of Qatar to the UN in New York to take the floor. Qatar has ratified or acceded to seven out of nine core international human rights treaties and two out of four related protocols. It has not accepted all individual complaints mechanism. It has issued a standing invitation to UN special procedures, but it has not accepted all country visits requests. Qatar has, has cases of unresolved reprisals highlighted in the Secretary General's report in the last 10 years, and it has paid its UN contribution in a timely manner in 2023. Qatar was previously a council member in the, in the term starting in, in uh, 2007, 2010, 2015, 2018, and 2022. The Ambassador, you have the floor. Thank you so much uh, for the opportunity. I want to thank Amnesty International and the Mission of Bulgaria and New York for this opportunity. Let me go straight ahead to answer your question. Of course, uh, as a current member and seeking re-election, the state of Qatar will continue to enhance uh, its international standing as a proactive and responsible member of the international community when it comes to the promotion and protection of human rights domestically and globally. At the national level, uh, we, we continue to seek to further our ongoing reforms and initiatives, particularly in education, healthcare, labor rights, women rights, and children's rights. These efforts are part of Qatar's broader commitment to sustainable development as outlined in our national vision 2030. The state of Qatar will continue to emphasize the importance of inclusive institutions, media freedom, and legislative reform, such as labor law improvements, which was notably highlighted during the preparations for the 2022 FIFA World Cup. At the international uh, stage, uh, Qatar aspires to lead by example and to play a proactive role in advancing human rights through diplomacy, mediation, and international cooperation. We also intend to leverage uh, uh, our position to support sustainable development, climate action, and social economic rights in L L LDCs, SIDS, and LLDCs through our membership uh, in the Human Rights Council. We, of course, uh, will continue to actively engage with the High Commission of Human Rights and UN Human Rights Mechanisms and Mandate Holders, uh, submitting reports to treaty bodies and supporting international human rights initiatives, further solidifying uh, its role as a key player in global human rights advocacy. And I thank you again for the opportunity. Thank you. Thank you, Ambassador al -Tani. I would like uh, to invite the distinguished representative of the Republic, the Republic of Korea, Mr. Lee Chul, Director General for International Organization and Nuclear Affairs, to take the floor. The Republic of Korea has ratified or acceded to eight out of nine core international human rights treaties and two out of four related protocols. It, it has not accepted all individual complaint mechanism. It has issued a standing invitation to UN special procedures, but has not accepted all country visits requests. The Republic of Korea has no cases of unresolved reprisals highlighted in the Secretary General's report in the last 10 years, and it has paid its UN contribution in a timely manner in 2023. The Republic of Korea was previously a council member in the terms starting in 2006, 2008, 2013, 2016, and 2020. Mr. Chul, you have the floor. Uh, thank you, Mr. Moderator. Uh, let me express our sincere thanks to the organizers and sponsors of this meeting. We appreciate this opportunity to engage with the stakeholders. 
uh, with, the uh, with the universal values at the center of its foreign policy, Korea remains committed to the promotion and protection of human rights, uh, both uh, domestically and internationally. As a candidate for Human Rights Council, there are ROK's key priorities. Uh, firstly, Korea will continue to be a firm advocate of the UN human rights mechanisms, which play a crucial role in addressing human rights challenges. With the standing invitation, we have received nine special procedures for the past five years. Its financial contribution to the OHCHR has increased sixfold over the last decade. Korea also values the UPR and has participated in the process in good faith. Secondly, Korea intends to lead efforts to tackle new and emerging challenges impacting human rights. We successfully led the two important Human Rights Council resolutions on digital technology and local government. We will continue to play a leading role in further developing these two resolutions so that the Human Rights Council address challenges of our time. Thirdly, Korea remains committed to strengthening its human rights by implementing international human rights instruments, which it is a party to and striving to see the remaining uh, human rights instruments. Recently, Korea withdrew its reservation on CRPD and also ratified the Convention on the Enforced Disappearance. We will also continue to faithfully engage with the treaty bodies. Lastly, Korea will continue its focus on vulnerable groups, including women and girls, children, persons with disabilities, migrants, and refugees. As we have recently increased our ODA uh, by 30%, we will strengthen our support for these groups through relevant UN agencies and partners. Korea also intends to advance women, peace, and security agenda with this action with the Women and Peace Initiative. I thank you, Mr. Moderator. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Mr. Chul. <clears throat> As mentioned, uh, Saudi Arabia did not respond to invitations uh, to participate in this event. Saudi Arabia has ratified or acceded to five out of nine core international human rights treaties and three out of four related protocols. It has not accepted all individual complaints mechanism. It has not issued a standing invitation to UN special procedures and has not accepted all country visits requests. Saudi Arabia has cases of unresolved reprisals highlighted in the Secretary General's report in the last 10 years, and it has paid its UN contributions in a timely manner in 2023. Saudi Arabia was previously a council member in the term starting in 2006, 2009, 2014, and 2017. I would like now to invite the distinguished representative of Spain. His Excellency Ambassador Marcos Gomez, permanent representative of Spain to the UN in Geneva to take the floor. Spain has ratified or acceded to eight out of nine core international human rights treaties and all related protocols. However, it has not accepted all individual complaints mechanism. It has issued a standing invitation to UN special procedures, but has not accepted all country visits requests. Spain has no cases of unresolved reprisals highlighted in the Secretary General's report in the last 10 years, and it has paid its UN contribution in a timely manner in 2023. Spain was previously a council member in the terms starting in 2010 and 2018. Ambassador Gomez, you have the floor. Muchas gracias y buena... Many thanks and good morning or good evening to all. I'd like to thank the organization, organizers of this event. This is an exercise in transparency and clarity for all those engaged in the work of the Council, which can be inspiring to all. And let me present my candidacy. The promotion and protection of human rights for us lies at the very heart of the policy of our kingdom. I mean, our domestic policy with a second uh, national action plan on human rights and our external policies uh, supporting this candidacy, which is important to all of us. Our candidacy is based on promoting uh, equality of gender, 
the rights of all genders and homosexuals and economic and cultural rights and values, as well as drinking water and other matters. At the same time, we uh, commit to fight against the death penalty to protect human rights with an uh, equitable system for the rights of persons with incapacity and disability. Spain will commit to promote the participation of all communities advancing in clear areas such as environmental sustainability, the right to life, digital rights and efforts to complete the 2030 Agenda. Obviously we support the uh, commitments which have been put forward and hope to uh, work with the Human Rights Council as a key actor in protecting all rights. If our candidacy is successful, we commit to be proactive and to collaborate and cooperate, being completely engaged to promote and protect all human rights. Many thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Ambassador. Um, now, uh, I will invite uh, the distinguished representative of Switzerland, His Excellency Ambassador Jörg Lauber, permanent representative of Switzerland to the UN in Geneva to take the floor. Switzerland has ratified or acceded to eight out of nine core international human rights treaties and all related protocols. However, it has not accepted all individual complaints mechanism. It has issued a sending invitation to UN special procedures and has accepted all country visits requests. Switzerland has no cases of unresolved reprisals highlighted in the Secretary General's report in the last 10 years, and it has paid its UN contribution in a timely manner in 2023. Switzerland was previously a council member in the term staging in 2006, 2010, and 2016. Ambassador Lauber, you have the floor. Thank you very much, Abdul, and thank you for moderating this event. I also thank ISHR and Amnesty International for organizing and the Permanent Mission of Bulgaria for sponsoring this event. Good afternoon to you all from Geneva. We welcome this opportunity for an exchange with representatives of states national human rights institutions, civil society, and academia. An open and transparent council is a concern that lies at the heart of our candidature for membership. Comme vous le savez, the Swiss... You are aware that Switzerland has played an active role in the Human Rights Council, and for us it's an honour to be able to present our candidacy once again for a fourth mandate. There can be no peace and stability without human rights, nor development. Switzerland is fully aware of the obligations under its unilateral context and the federal uh, structure of our country. Since the creation of the Human Rights Council, Switzerland has always put its first foot forward to contribute efficiently to promote the protection of human rights throughout the world efforts and concentrate on three key areas. One, we want to promote and protect human rights through a strong Human Rights Council. We are committed to maintaining the Council's capacity to react whenever and wherever human rights violations occur. At the normative level, we will strengthen international standards and ensure their respect and implementation. We will actively participate in the work of the Council and do so in a spirit of cooperation, inclusion and dialogue. This includes our engagement with states as well as with other stakeholders. Two, we shall continue to promote human rights across the United Nations system. Among other things, we will contribute to the protection of linguistic, religious, ethnic national or other minorities and vulnerable groups. We will do so with a special focus on capacity building and as a major donor to the Office of the High Commissioner of Human Rights, 
as well as to a number of funds and programs that are active in these fields. Troisièmement, nous renforcerons la promotion et la protection des droits de l'homme. Thirdly, we'll strengthen promotion of human rights at national level. We will do this by uh, acting in good faith to put it, implement the recommendations accepted via our country. We drafted our fifth uh, report in an inclusive fashion under the UPR system to encourage all contributions from civil society. And I'd like to thank you for your attention. Thank you, merci, merci. Uh, thank you, uh, Ambassador Lauber. Uh, the last on the list of candidates is Thailand. I would like to invite the distinguished representative uh, of uh, Thailand, um, Ms. Pinsuda Jayanama, the Director General of the Department of International Organization at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs to take the floor. Thailand has ratified or acceded to seven out of nine international human rights treaties and two out of four related protocols However, it has not accepted all individual complaints mechanism. It has issued a sending invitation to UN special procedures, but it, has, it hasn't accepted all country visits requests. Thailand has cases of alleged reprisals highlighted in the Secretary General's report in the last 10 years, and it has paid its UN contribution in a timely manner. In 2023, Thailand was previously a council member in the term starting in 2010. Ms. Jayanama, you have the floor. We thank the International Service for Human Rights, Amnesty International, as well as the permanent mission of Bulgaria to the UN for this opportunity. At the international level, Thailand will work with all partners, states, relevant UN agencies, and civil society organizations to maximize the impact of the works of the Council on the ground. We would like to see the Council making a real difference in people's lives and will do so by working through various means. First, with our track record of being a constructive member and bridge builder, Thailand will seek to promote dialogue and bring synergies and needed solidarities to the Council. Second, we, need, we will ensure that the Council addresses all dimensions of human rights. The Council should also be more responsive to existing and emerging challenges such as international conflicts, pandemic, climate changes, and threats from emerging technology. Third, as pen holder of the resolution on enhancement of technical cooperation and capacity building in the field of human rights, Thailand will continue to advocate sharing of experiences and assisting states in their human rights implementation. We also recently made the contribution of 100,000 US dollars to the Voluntary Trust Fund, for technical cooperation to support such endeavor. Fourth, with our experience as president of the council during the first review of the council in 2011, Thailand will build on this and work constructively with partners to rationalize and further enhance the effectiveness of the council. At the national level, Thailand has made various progress in recent years. We have done good work so far with upgrading the laws and implementing policies like universal health coverage and education for all. We will continue to do more and work with all partners. Thailand is, is committed to promote and protect civil and political rights while ensuring progressive realization of economic, social, and cultural rights to promote equity, equality, and social justice, and to protect those in vulnerable situations so that no one will be left behind. The latest one is on the International Convention on the Protection of All Persons from Enforced Disappearance. We have also confirmed to receive official visits on the Working Group on Discrimination Against Women and Girls in December this year. We pledge to be your responsible and constructive partner for human rights, and we hope to receive your support. Just to correct the introduction, we have acceded to eight out of nine core human rights treaties. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Ms. <clears throat> Jayanama. Uh, your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to, to thank the candidates for their responses. This concludes the first part of our discussion. We will now move to uh, the section uh, dedicated to questions uh, from the audience. We will now present some questions to candidates from the audience in order to make the best use of the time available. We kindly request you 
send concise questions to allow as many members of the audience as possible to contribute. Questions can be of a general nature and ask of all candidates or direct it to a specific candidate. Each candidate will be invited to respond to at least one question in each round, and no candidate will be required to respond to more than three questions directed specifically to the candidate states. Candidates have two minutes to, to respond. I urge uh, the candidates definitely to stick to the time, time limit. We are running out of time, so um, do your best definitely to stick uh, to the time, time limit. So I will ask, we have four questions from the audience in the first group of questions. Uh, for Thailand, we have a question from Thai lawyers for human rights and, uh, and Anna Ananon, young Thai human rights defender. Many, the question is as follow. Many UN experts have expressed concerns and recommendation and recommended the amendment of the Les Majesté Law, Article 112 of the Thai Criminal Court, which provides that, I quote, whoever defames, insult, or threaten members of the royal family shall be punished with imprisonment of three to 15 years, end of quote. As a country, who is a candidate to the Human Rights Council? How do you plan to readjust this law to comply with international law and UN expert recommendations. The next question is for Switzerland. The question was asked by Ina Volker of the BAGSO, difficult to pronounce. What steps, the question is as follow, what steps will Switzerland be taking to strengthen the protection of the human, of the rights of older person at national and regional and international levels? And what is its position towards the drafting of a new convention on the right of older persons under the auspices of the Human Rights Council? The next question is for, for Spain. We receive a similar question from La Asociación Española para el Derecho Internacional de los Derechos Humanos and Mat for Peace, Development and Human Rights. The question is as follow. While Spain has ratified many core human rights treaties, some remain unratified, such as the Convention on the Protection of the Right of All Migrant Workers. In addition to this, Spain has not ratified some of the associated protocols, such as the Convention on Enforced Disappearances and the Convention on the Elimination of Racial Discrimination, Individual Communication Procedures. What steps will Spain take to address these gaps and fully align with international human rights standards? The next one is for the Republic of Korea. And the question was asked by uh, Human Rights Watch. The question is as follow. Will the, Rep the Republic of Korea show leadership at the UN by joining its last remaining convention on the protection of the rights of all migrant workers? So I will stop here. So um, the floor is, is yours. We'll start by Thailand, then Switzerland, Spain, and in Korea, you have two minutes to, to respond. Thank you. Thank you. Um, in, in response to question on Les Majesty Law, um, Thailand as a party to the International Conven Convention on Civil and Political Rights, or ICCPR, the Thai government reiterates its commitment under international obligations to protect human rights and assure its citizens 
enjoy their rights to freedom of, of expression and peaceful assembly. These rights are, gar are guaranteed by the Thai constitution and include participation in public affairs and discussion and debate about various issues, so long as the exercise of such rights is within the bounds of the law. The right to freedom of expression also carries with it duties and responsibilities, particularly in relation to the reputation of others and to the protection of public order and national security, which is reflected in Article 19, Bracket 3 of the ICCPR. In addition, ICCPR Article 21 provides for situations where restrictions may be placed on the exercise of the right to freedom and peaceful assembly, in particular in relation to national security, public safety, public order, and, and the protection of public health or morals. Striking a delicate balance with regard to these rights is important, yet not easy for any state, and Thailand continues its efforts to find such a right balance. The rights to freedom of expression and peaceful assembly are guaranteed under the Constitution of Thailand. Section 112 is a sensitive matter as it directly involves national unity. All governments, however, have tried to ensure that its use is not politicized. Thank you. Thank you, um, dear Dynama. So uh, the next uh, uh, Switzerland, please, can you uh, answer to the question? Two minutes, please. Thank you very much uh, for the question. Like uh, other countries in Europe, Switzerland has an aging society, so this question is of uh, great relevance for us. We believe essentially that the existing international, but also our national legal framework is sufficient uh, to protect uh, the rights and interests of uh, populations at any age. Our focus therefore is on the implementation. The focus is on non-discrimination. We want to make sure that again, the population of any age, including an elderly population, uh, is not being discriminated, that they have access to all the rights, but also to all the services, in particular social services that they need. Our focus is on, on strengthening and making sure that the social services reach uh, uh, every, also the elderly people and that we can, to the extent possible, uh, um, improve uh, these services. In this context, um, we are, of course, happy to exchange our own experience and our own uh, best practices with other members in the Council or uh, observer countries, and also uh, ready to put the focus on technical cooperation in this field. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Ambassador Lauber. Spain, please. Muchas gracias. La, la... Thank you very much for the question. Uh, we were asked a double question with a first uh, part on the protection of human rights in uh, our work for the migrants and their families. And the second part of the question was on the possibility of uh, taking on more obligations via additional protocols. Now for the first part of the question, as you know, the Convention on Migrants was the object of a, an adoption process, which did not lead to a consensus. Neither Spain nor other EU countries ratified this instrument. I believe that the philosophical base of this position is that we have a very robust uh, legal system and that it is included in the organic law on the rights of uh, foreigners, uh, foreign workers in Spain, which is updated periodically uh, based on upon the needs in Spain. The latest update, update uh, dates back to this year and amplified the rights of migrants. Now regarding the possibility of uh, taking up more commitments uh, We are open to it. In my opinion, there, uh, we should not stop at words and move on to the substance. 
and we can already see gaps. And this is where we should intervene at a legal and legislative level. But I do believe that we should move on to practice and application and implementation. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you Ambassador. Now uh, the floor is for the Republic of Korea. Two minutes, please. Uh, thank you, moderator. Uh, also, thanks uh, for, the, for the questions. Uh, there are a few uh, international uh, human rights conventions and optional protocols that uh, Korea has not uh, ratified yet, uh, including the, the Migrant Workers uh, Convention. And the reason uh, we were not able to uh, uh, ratify all these uh, conventions and optional protocols is mainly due to the concern over uh, compatibility with the relevant domestic laws. So for ratification of this legal uh, instrument, uh, we will continue to uh, hear uh, from civil society actors and also continue to uh, carefully examine uh, the compatibility uh, with the domestic laws. And uh, having said that, uh, Korea is actually deeply engaged in a global uh, migration governance and, and strengthen uh, its contribution at the uh, relevant international organizations, for example, uh, International Organization for Migrations. Uh, Korea is also uh, supporting uh, regions uh, with chronic uh, migration issues, uh, including Afghanistan and, and other countries in the region. So while we continue to uh, explore uh, the ratification of these uh, remaining uh, uh, conventions, uh, we will continue to uh, contribute to international efforts to address uh, this important issue. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Chu. Uh, now we'll uh, move to the second group of four questions. Uh, I will read them all uh, before giving uh, uh, the floor to Qatar, North Macedonia, Mexico, and the Marshall, the Marshall Islands. So the first question is for, for Qatar. And the question was asked uh, by the Gulf Center for Human Rights. Uh, the question is uh, as follows. When do authorities in, in Qatar plan to grant women their full rights, including the right to political participation, considering that none of them were able to be elected to the Shura Council in the election that took place in October 2021? And when and when will the authorities release all the detained prisoners of co conscience, including human rights lawyers, Dr. Haza bin Ali Abu Shreide Al Almari, and his brother Rashid bin Ali Abu Shreide Almari, who are serving life for their uh, peaceful and le legitimate human rights work? And uh, the second one is for North Macedonia. This was a question asked to all states because we did not receive a specific question for North Macedonia. And this question is asked um, by internationallawyers.org. How will you, your state, promote the right to development and the adoption of the Convention on the Right to Development during your time in the Council? And the last one is, uh, the third one is for, sorry, the third one is for Mexico. And uh, the question is asked, um, is from the Instituto para las Mujeres en la Migración. And the question is as follow. As an, as an incoming member of the Human Rights Council, what specific action will you take to promote the rights of migrants and those in need of international protection at the Council? Uh, As well. Excuse me, may I have the floor? Yes, please. I couldn't catch your question. Can you repeat it slowly, please? Oh, the the, the first question for okay from for North in, Macedonia. Okay, how will your state promote the right to development and the adoption of the Convention on the Right to Development during your time in the Council? 
then for Mexico, the question, as I said, was uh, is from the Instituto para las Mujeres en la Migración. And the question is as follow, as an incoming member of the Human Rights Council, what specific action will you take to promote the rights of migrants and those in need of international protection at the Council, as well as with special procedures and treaty bodies? In doing so, how will you collaborate with organizations defending the rights of migrants and those in need of international protection? The last one is for Marsh Marshall Islands. This question was asked to all states because we, we don't have a specific question for Marshall Island. So it is uh, for you to, to respond. And the question is as, as fellow. A question from the Center for Reproductive Rights. What is your position on access to abortion as a part of the fundamental right to bodily autonomy? Let me stop here and give the floor to Qatar to answer the first question. You have two minutes, please. Thank you so much. Uh, on 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 women's right to vote, of course, just to state a fact, Qatari women have had the right to, to vote and run for public uh, office since uh, late 90s. This uh, right was officially granted in 1999, making Qatari, uh, Qatar one of the first Gulf countries to extend voting rights uh, to women. So I really advise uh, those to, to also visit uh, uh, official uh, Qatari, uh, mem uh, the state of Qatar uh, official websites to to have further information about these historic moves. Um, on on the promotion and protection of human human rights in general, uh, the state of Qatar has different uh, mechanisms for complaints and addressing uh, grievances. Uh, of course, one most prominently is our independent National Committee for Human Rights uh, that has been established two decades ago and. Uh, it has played an important role in the promotion and protection of human rights, individual rights. Um, uh, they are playing an important role as well in Geneva uh, through the, uh, the International Committee on uh, Human Rights Institutions. They actually head the uh, International Alliance for uh, National Committees for Human Rights, and they're play playing a very important role in setting example in the region. Uh, as I said earlier, uh, Qatar has, will continue to play a prominent role uh, and, and a proactive role through its membership, current membership, and uh, through our seeking for the re-election. And I thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Qatar. Now, the, the, the floor is for North Macedonia. You have the floor, please. Two minutes. North Macedonia. North Macedonia, we... Yes, yes. <laughs> well, uh, thank you for your question. Uh, this is an important issue, and I want to make sure that I provide you with the most accurate and comprehensive response. To do that, I will need to consult with my colleagues in my capital, and I appreciate your understanding, and we'll very soon follow up with you uh, with more information to share. Thank you. Thank you. Now, um, Mexico, you have the floor. Muchas gracias for many thanks for the question. We would point out that Mexico is continuing to protect the resolutions on human rights for migrants. Mexico has a number of pieces of legislation covering this topic. And recently, I refer to the fact that Mexico has signed new instruments to protect the causes of migrant workers. In this context, we have specific piece of legislation for protection and for mobility of workers uh, in the context of our commitments to development and the inclusion of migrant workers. 
Many thanks. I'd like to add a couple of points, if I might. On best practices which we can share and implement in the context of human rights. We have wide participation of all civil society bodies in our efforts. And for many years now, we have been working with civil society organizations to implement all our objectives. And this will, effort will intensify in the uh, weeks and months to come as regards human rights. There are many examples which could be quoted. And we also work hard to protect the rights of children working in the context of the Universal Periodic Review mechanism, which we fully respect. To complement all information, we will then send in uh, further data at a later juncture. So I think it's fair to say that participation of civil society is a very wide-based phenomenon in our country. Many thanks. Uh, the floor is for Marshall, Marshall Islands. Marshall Islands, you have the floor. Mm, no answer. Do we have them still since still online? Hello? Yes, Marshall Islands, you've yeah, unmuted. Of course, you have, you have the, floor. the floor. Two minutes, please. <clears throat> thank you. And thank you for the question. I know you mentioned that there was no specific questions to us, but nevertheless, is being applied applicable across the board to all the candidate states. Um, just to take this opportunity as a small island developing state and a relative, re relatively new uh, nation, I would say the Marshall Islands is committed to upholding the highest standards of open democracy and fundamental freedom and to further national progress on core human rights goals, uh, both in treaty participation as well as in our own constitution. And while capacity and economic resources are often scarce, uh, full attainment and protection of these human rights is of the highest national priority. Having said that, uh, with regards to the question, uh, we uh, do not have a st state position, but nevertheless, we continue and have been during our membership, first membership, uh, supporting uh, issues related to women and girls' uh, reproductive rights. And uh, noting this issue being not a right per se, but if I can just make some general responses or comments in relation to this in our experience or in our national context and um, unique history, I would say. So the how that informs the paramount consideration when it comes to the rights of women and girls, reproductive rights. Uh, as I had mentioned in my introductory remarks, through our nuclear legacy, we experienced some, uh, uh, there was some, I would say negative experience in that uh, our Marshallese women were subject to uh, experiments, uh, medical experiment without consent and it is in this context that we would uh, stress bodily and autonomy protection of women's rights uh, is what we stand for. Uh, again, having said that, uh, I hope that that covers the question or addresses the question that was posed. Thank you. Th thank you. Thank you. Um, now we'll move to the to the third round, uh, third group of, of questions. Um, it is, uh, these questions are for Iceland, Czechia, Cyprus, and, and Colombia. Um, for Iceland, the, the the question is from Set My People Free. And the question is as follow. As a member of the Human Rights Council, what steps will Iceland take at the council to protect the rights of LGBTIQ 
LGBTQI+, but also ex-Muslim who face legal and existential threats in over 24 countries. And for, for Tekia, the question is from Human Rights Watch, and the question is as follows. The Czech government has welcomed ICC action on Russia's crimes in Ukraine while criticizing it for Israeli crimes in Gaza and preventing EU action to address them. Will the Czech government end its double standards and demand accountability for all atrocity crimes, whichever the perpetrator? And for Cyprus, the question is from the shelter students refuge. The question is as follow. Given the increasing number of refugee and asylum, asylum seekers arriving in Cyprus, how does your government view the situation and what role do you think the international community, including your country, should play in ensuring that the rights of these vulnerable population are upheld and that they are provided with adequate protection and support? And the last one is for Colombia. We received a, a question from Centro de Estudios Legales in Sociales and Plataforma Mesa Nacional para los Migraciones and ref, Refugiados in Republica Dominicana. And the question is as follows Human mobility is a multidirectional phenomenon with increasingly complex dynamics in risky contexts. And some states' responses as, are restrictive and even criminalizing. What is Colombia's position in response to this phenomenon, guaranteeing the protection of the human rights of people of the move? What specific action will the Colombian government take from a human rights perspective in order to address the issue at the Council, as well as in relation to the Venezuelan migration at the national level? You, please, you have the floor, starting by Iceland, then Czechia, Cyprus, and uh, finally, uh, Colombia. Iceland, you have the floor. Two minutes, please. Thank you, moderator. And uh, uh, I uh, thank for this question, which uh, Iceland very much welcomes. Uh, uh, in our uh, work uh, in the Council as an observer, we have placed particular focus on LGBTQI uh, plus uh, uh, issues. And uh, uh, put it, for example, at the forefront of our engagement in the UPR, uh, where we uh, always participate and, uh, and always uh, have this issue as one of our three main priorities. Uh, Iceland has been, uh, as many other countries, uh, advancing domestic legislations in recent years, and uh, we remain strongly convinced uh, of the benefit of all, of allowing uh, all uh, citizens to fully uh, utilize their potential. And uh, we have seen it for ourselves, and we will use our position in the Council uh, to make a convincing argument uh, for those uh, uh, that uh, still uh, uh, approach this from a different angle. And in particular, uh, as this was related uh, to the situation of, of Muslims around the world, uh, this is, of course, one of the elements when we, uh, that we see uh, uh, coming into, uh, into the uh, question about uh, religious uh, hatred and, and, and uh, religious, uh, well, freedom to religion. And of course, uh, here, uh, what we have to do as, as much as we uh, work against any form of religious uh, hate, uh, hatred, uh, we have to uh, be committed uh, to uh, also uh, defend and balance it with the freedom of 
expression. Uh, so we believe that uh, it is actually more uh, interaction, more speech, not less uh, that is needed when it comes uh, uh, to these issues. And uh, and we have to we have to um, uh, 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 condemn any kind of 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 religious uh, hatred or. Uh, depression of, of, of freedom of belief, but it cannot uh, be done uh, at the cost of any individual. And Thank let's uh, forget that it's always about the rights of individuals at the end of the day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ambassador. So, take care. Ambassador Balik. Thank you very much uh, for the floor. Uh, let me, from the outset, uh, refuse this uh, double standards uh, narrative. The Czech Republic supports Ukraine's efforts to defend itself against the uh, war of aggression waged by uh, Russia. And we do support Israel and its right to defend itself in line with international law. Yet, human rights of all must be respected, protected, and fulfilled conditionally, respective of the territory and the nationality. I mentioned uh, during my introductory speech that uh, our history teaches us and our very existence showed us that uh, international rules-based order uh, with human rights at its core is uh, very much linked uh, with, our, with our very, very existent future. So uh, I, cannot, I cannot accept the, the narrative. Thank you. Thank you, Ambassador Balik. Uh, Cyprus? Thank you, Abdul, and uh, apologies for a meeting to thank you before, but I had very little time. <laughs> now, on my on the question of, of uh, migrants, um, Cyprus continued to rank first among EU member states in proportion to its population in first-time applicants for international protection. That puts our capacities and effectiveness to respect, uh, protect, and fulfill our human rights obligations under severe strain. Uh, having said that, uh, Cyprus provides enhanced assistance to asylum seekers and migrants. Following the introduction of new legislation in 2020, uh, applications are now examined expeditiously. The rights of asylum seekers uh, and migrants to access healthcare facilities and labour market are guaranteed. They're also provided with financial assistance to cover basic needs and personal minor expenses. Uh, we are also constantly upgrading our measures to, um, in order to enhance the living conditions and to ensure accommodation on first reception centres for as many as possible. We are also um, uh, in the process of compiling a new action plan for the integration and social inclusion of uh, immigrants. And needless to say that we are in constant collaboration uh, with IOM and UNHCR uh, to. Um, enhance our response for the protection uh, of the rights of migrants. Thank you. Thank you, Ambassador Neopreus. Um, now, um, for, uh, the floor is for Ambassador Gallon. Colombia. Many thanks, moderator. The topic of migration and human mobility is hugely important for Colombia because our nation has always been a nation welcoming migrants for many decades and we are our population is made up, made up to a large percentage of migrants and the support of Colombian authorities is very much committed to managing the rights of the millions uh, also of Colombians who are abroad. But uh, history is, is complex and migration is an increasingly uh, important phenomenon. Colombia has 2.8 million persons coming from migration on her soil. We have been able to open our arms to them and ensure regularization of as many as possible. So concretely speaking, we uh, award permits uh, to stay for 10 years in, in, in the country. Uh, 
after which it's possible for people to request uh, uh, the status of nationals. So those people who enjoy a tenure permit are numerous, but the situation is also very concerning in parts of our countries where there are hubs for migrants coming from various other countries like Venezuela, Africa, Asia, China, and others, and passing through our country to move to the north. This is a situation of great difficulty for Colombia, and we are dealing with it as expeditiously and as efficiently as possible hand in hand with Panama and authorities for the USA. So in this case of migrant populations, there are various measures which uh, help these um, populations in transit to enjoy better living conditions and uh, protection. It's a dramatic situation, very concerning, and we do our utmost to help. As regards human rights within the UN and the Human Rights Council, Colombia this year has submitted its presidency for the uh, World Forum on uh, Migration and Development. And we have met on a number of occasions in Geneva in the second um, semester of 2025. We will be working with the General Assembly and have been for a number of years now. The goal would be to regulate migration in a positive and constructive fashion, seeing uh, migrants as a, uh, a contributor to development. And for this reason, we will want to be actively in all efforts in the, within the context of the World uh, Pact on Migration and Development. So we are in no way neglecting the importance of this topic and doing our utmost to protect human rights in the context of our general efforts. Mm, now um, I will move to the fourth group of questions. These questions are for states that are not present today. I will read them all together for the sake of transparency. Uh, the first question is for Saudi Arabia. The question is from Al Quds for Human Rights. And the question is as follows The Human Rights Council is a critical body whose success depends on members' commitment to cooperate closely with the UN in a bid to promote human rights. Yet, UN fact finding experts have been repeatedly denied access to Saudi Arabia for many years. Saudi Arabia refuses to engage constructively with council mechanism, and Saudi human rights defenders face reprisals for engaging with the UN. What steps will Saudi Arabia take to ensure that their actions align with membership criteria of Human Rights Council set out in Resolution 60251. The second one is for Kenya. Uh, the question is from Ridris and Peace Brigades International. Kenya has experienced mass demonstrations in June with recent reports of human rights violations, including alleged abuses by Kenya Defense Forces and police and numerous protesters allegedly killed and de disappeared by security forces. The establishment of a coroner service would be key to investigate to inv investigating those crimes. Specifically, what steps will be taken to operationalize the Prevention of Torture Act and the National Coroner's Service Act to ensure accountability for perpetrators and to uphold the rights to peaceful protest and assembly 
in line with international human rights obligations. The next one, the third one is for Gambia, for the Gambia. And the question is from Defend Defenders. And the question is as follow, will the Gambia commit to applying principled support to country specific initiative on the basis of objective criteria, as well as committing to the incoming members pledge and Irish principles. The last one is for Ethiopia. And the question is from the Ethiopian Human Rights Defender Center. And the question is as follow, what are the measures the government plan to take to ensure impartial, proof and effective investigation into all cases of attacks, harassment, and intimidation against civil society activists, human rights defenders, and journalists, and ensure that all perpetrators are brought to justice in fair trials. Sorry, the last one is for the DRC. From and the question is from Human Rights and Development in Africa. And the question is uh, as follow. What concrete commitment is the DRC prepared to make to improve access to justice and guarantee the independence of the judicial system in order to combat impunity and to make progress in protecting human rights defenders, journalists, and political opponents? who are often victims of intimidation, arbitrary arrest, and violence. And uh, for Bolivia, the question is from Carmen Capriles Flores, a human rights defender from Bolivia. And the question is as follows. Given Bolivia's obligation under international human rights law, what specific steps will be the government, will the government take to address the unresolved issue of enforced disappearances, most of which occurred during the period 1972 and 1980. How will the government ensure accountability and deliver justice, not just reparations, to the victims and their families? For instance, in the case of my family, the I mean, the family of Carlos Flores Bedragal and others against Bolivia. A year has passed since the Inter American Court of Human Rights issued its ruling. Yet, Bolivia has made little progress in, in investigating and finding the body of Carlos Flores Bedragal, showing minimal political will to do so. And for Benin, the question is from different defenders, and the question is as follow: regarding principal support to country-specific initiative on the basis of objective criteria, can Benin commit to the incoming members' pledge and Irish principles? This uh, concludes the sets of questions for uh, the uh, the candidate states not present. Now, um, I will move to the second round, this time in alphabetical, alphabetical order. I will ask a first group of four questions. I will read all of them, and uh, I will give the floor to each state to respond. The first one is for Colombia, and the question was asked by Elects Action Juridica. And the question is as follow. What will be Colombia's position on issues that refer to situation of racial discrimination, such as racist police violence in the global and national context before the Council? Will they prioritize this issue? And what actions will they take to promote the participation of Afro-descendant population at the council. The next one is for Cyprus. And this question um, is from 
Age Platform and also Bethany Brown and AR, AARP International. And the question is as follow. How does your country promote the equal enjoyment of human rights by all the persons? What action does it foresee at national, regional, and international levels? And will it support the drafting of a new human rights convention for all the persons under the auspices of the Human Rights Council? And for Czechia, we receive uh, this question, Plataforma Colombiana de Organizaciones Sociales y Populares, por el protagonismo de niñas, niños y jóvenes. Plataforma Three Voce Voices. And the question is as follows. What is your proposal to ensure the active participation of children in the Human Rights Council? And would you commit to creating protocols to ensure such participation. And uh, finally, for Iceland, this is a question from internationallawyer.org. And the question is as follow. How will you ensure that the historical responsibility and intergenerational responsibilities of states are taken into account in ensuring the common but differentiated responsibilities of states for migrate for mitigation and adaptation activities and ensuring adequate and new finance technology transfer and capacity building to all developing countries so they can combat the adverse effect of climate change uh, climate change that impact human rights. I will stop here and I will go back to each state to answer questions. So, Colombia, you have the floor. Thank you. Thank you very much for this question. The fight against racial discrimination is a priority in Colombia. It is, it is inscribed in its human rights policy, especially in the protection of the most vulnerable populations, such as the um, women, uh, children, indigenous peoples, LGBTI people, people with disabilities, and others. Racial discrimination is extremely important to those uh, marginalized populations. And Police violence against Afro descendants is also a grave concern. In Colombia, we had what we called a mobile squad. I do not remember the uh, specific name of the squad for the uh, to act uh, in the context of uh, manifestations and protests. And they have committed some serious uh, crimes and violence. Which led to the creation of a new unit with a very different approach, an approach that is centered on protecting humans because Colombia is very well aware of the situation and the need to uh, push for peace. And Colombia has had a new policy based on national security that considers all sides of the people that its populations needs. Mm -hmm. And so the fight had been to fight enemies of the state with military weapons. However, the police should be friends with this population, should protect this population, which led to a new policy for human security and safety. And we're now working together with the United Nations and other entities, including the adoption of a resolution.
Thank you, thank you, Ambassador. Uh, Cyprus. Cyprus likely. I'm sorry. Likely. Yeah. Okay. You have the floor. Um, okay. Yeah. Cyprus has taken several steps to enhance the protection of older persons, focusing on both legal frameworks and social services. And obviously, the angle is uh, um, to not be discriminated for older persons, not to be discriminated against. Um, the country has implemented national policies that align with international standards, uh, emphasizing independence, participation, care, self-fulfillment and dignity. Cyprus has laws in place that protect the rights of older persons, particularly in areas such as health care, social security and protection from abuse or neglect. Um, for example, the government provides various social benefits, including pensions and health care services, aimed at ensuring that older persons have access to the resources they need for a dignified life. Also, while trying to enhance uh, uh, implementation of these social services, we're also looking into new areas that are, 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 are um, appearing, such as the digital divide for older persons or acquiring new skills. Um, as to the a new instrument for, for the protection of older persons, we're actively um, following um, consultations, and we will be um, examining it as it uh, takes form. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ambassador. Check here. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much uh, for the floor uh, again, and many thanks uh, for the important question. I've mentioned already that uh, we are committed uh, to make uh, rights, but we will stay committed. Mm -hmm. Really uh, pointed out uh, to the right uh, to equal participation in political public affairs and use uh, in German are part of it. There is no doubt uh, about that, and we will stay active uh, in this particular field. Uh, just to really complement uh, this commitment, uh, these practical deeds, let, let me add that we are co sponsoring uh, a self titled here in Geneva on the uh, 19th of September, uh, which will address the participation of uh, youths and children. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Ambassador. Uh, Iceland? Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. And uh, 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 human rights are a cornerstone of Iceland's uh, international development cooperation. And uh, in our view, uh, mainstreaming human rights uh, across uh, the UN is a is fundamental as human rights, uh, peace and security and development are interlinked and mutually reinforcing. Uh, now, of course, uh, a lot uh, of this work takes uh, place uh, not inside of the Council, but rather in uh, the uh, general uh, international uh, fora. Uh, but looking towards the council work, uh, we would, of course, uh, want to highlight uh, also our commitment to uh, uh, contributing to OHS uh, CSR, where we have just uh, renewed our five-year agreement uh, with OHS CSR uh, and uh, doubled our uh, predictable core contributions. And not to mention that we also are contributing to the two voluntary funds in relation to the UPRs, both for participation and technical assistance. Uh, so this is, of course, something which we very much value. I stop with that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ambassador. So um, now we'll move to the second group of four questions. Um, and um, for Marshall Island, Mexico, North Macedonia, and Qatar. Um, I will read all of them. Uh, we... Um, the, the question is from Civics, Civicus, how much do you accord to civic space as an essential element of human rights and how will you advance it as a human rights council member? The question is for, for Marshall Island, I mean, eh? it's, uh, the question is from Civicus. Let me repeat it uh, 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 for the sake of clarity. How much importance do you accord to civic space as an essential element of human rights and how will you advance it as a human rights 
uh, Human Rights Council member. The next one is for Mexico. And the question is from Amnesty International Me Mexico. And the question is as follow. On militarization, how Mexico support victims of human rights violations committed in context of militarization, guaranteeing access to justice, reparation, and non-repetition. The next one is for North Macedonia. The question is from Global UN Engagement Coordinator for the stakeholder group of communities discriminated on work and dissent, part of the major groups and other stakeholders. Um, so the, give me a second, Ambassador um, Freshkowski of North Macedonia, permanent mission in the UN, to the UN in New York, has shown exemplary commitment to protecting minorities and the vulnerable, including communities discriminated on work and dissent and the LGBTI community. With a new ambassador soon to follow, how will North Macedonia ensure this commitment is institutionalized and continues rather than being an isolated effort while recognizing progress. What challenges does North Macedonia identify regarding the Roma community, part of communities discriminated on work and dissent? We are particularly interested in issues of economic and cultural marginalization, physical segregation, and access to education. And for Qatar, the question is from Jubilee. Jubilee campaign set our people free. And the question is as follow. During, during the Human Rights Committee review of Qatar's compliance with the ICCPR in 2022, the expert ask Qatar about the sanction of the death penalty for apostasy. In fact, at the end of the review, the treaty body member noted that, I quote, he had not heard an answer to the earlier question as to whether the death penalty could be imposed for apostasy, end of quote. How is Qatar working to ensure the death penalty is only a sanction for most serious crime and not for leaving the state religion and for exercising other human rights. So now uh, let's start um, to by uh, um, Marshall Island for the responses. Marshall Islands, you have the floor. Thank you again for the question. Um, for the Marshall Islands, civic space is uh, crucially important. Uh, we we found out during our first term on the council and through our engagement with um, civil society organizations, youth, NGOs, both here in Geneva and as well as in the capital and elsewhere, that the biggest support we got on our most important uh, human rights priorities at the time namely climate change and our nuclear legacy came from these uh, civic uh, actors. And so ensuring civic space and protecting human rights defenders is important to ensure that uh, our government is in touch, government and the people, with, with the pulse of the, its people. And this is key in effectively uh, mobilizing state efforts to address concerns and priorities. Uh, if I may expand a bit, uh, so we, as I mentioned before, not only in my last response to the previous question, but uh, in my introductory remarks, uh, we are committed to strengthening protection of basic human rights, and that includes civic space and those actors that play a critical part. And we are committed to uh, further efforts. Uh, key challenges have been, again, climate change impacts, uh, particularly sea level rise, 
uh, impacts of nuclear testing and others. Thank you. And for our second term, we will have an independent voice, continue to have an independent voice on the council, considering that it is of utmost important to listen closely to all perspectives and understand the facts and take an informed decision. Thank you. Position. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, now, um, Mexico. Many thanks for the question. I will be able to give some extra information now as regards the way in which we help victims in our country uh, in the military sphere. I want to make this very clear. It's a priority for our government and one of the focuses. Uh, militarization is not a goal in Mexico. And I want to point out that our emphasis lies on public safety. And we work with a robust system of social programs and special measures, notably to protect uh, unemployed, uh, the youth, and to enhance education uh, possibilities. So our public national security policy is one where public safety is in prime position. And we will ensure that uh, this, there will be an intergovernmental, uh, interministerial, I beg your pardon, approach along these lines. I perhaps give my, the floor now to my, my colleague if he has anything to add. I would just add that we have a number of legislative tools to walk hand in hand with victims of human rights abuses in all spheres. Mexico has an executive commission for victims of violence and we coordinate our efforts nationwide. We've invested more than 900 million pesos in reparations and damages to such victims. And currently Mexico has a number of institutions to support victims and to support their access to human rights of all sorts. For example, in Mexico, we have a commission for eradication of militias and a mechanism to protect those persons uh, subject to human rights uh, abuses. And this effort will continue. Many thanks. Um, North Macedonia. North Macedonia, you have the floor. Thank you. And thank you for the question. We are aware that no society is immune to the serious challenges it faces in connection to the rights of vulnerable categories, all of which put into question to a greater or lesser extent the exercise of fundamental human rights and freedoms. Regardless of who represents our country, the commitment of North Macedonia will continue in the context of advancing all human rights. North Macedonia, as previously, previously said, as a multi-ethnic and multicultural country, supports systematic efforts to sustain and promote the culture of peace, tolerance, non-discrimination, understanding and respect for culture and ethnic diversity. Based on its long-standing tradition of tolerance, North Macedonia will continue to promote intercultural and interreligious dialogue, strengthening the protection of freedom of religion or belief, fighting all forms of discrimination, racism, xenophobia, anti-Semitism, and hate speech. The law on audio and audiovisual uh, media services provided for a fine for televisions and radios if having been found to have spread or incited hate speech and discrimination on a number of grounds, sex, gender, gender identity, sexual orientation, belonging to a marginalized group. North Macedonia continuously takes steps aimed at prevention and education, advocating on this matter as part of its efforts aimed at further developing media literacy and encouraging social inclusion. Uh, the implementation, uh, just a second. 
Mm. Our 2022 2026 national strategy on equality and non discrimination aims at effectively preventing and protecting against discrimination by observing the principle of equality and the prohibition of discrimination against any persons or groups of persons based on their personal features and especially the vulnerable social groups, including LGBTQIA. Four pride parades have been held in the country to date, resulting in improvements in the exercise of freedom of assembly as demonstrated in the high degree of security issued by the authorities as public events related to LGBTQIA rights. The Ministry of Labor and Social Policy provides financial support to the Shelter Center opened for the very first time for those victims of violence. Uh, the Thanks. very first LGBT SOS telephone was also opened with the support of the Ministry of Labor and Social Policy. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. So, Thank you. now you have the floor. you have the floor. Yes, thank you so much. Sorry. So just to address the question uh, on the application of the death penalty, of course, the law number 23 of uh, 2024 uh, explicitly explains the application of the death penalty in the cases where the application applies. Uh, again, I think this is very important to look thoroughly at the law that is available online. Uh, just to address uh, the issue in general, uh, when it comes to the Qatari constitution, the Constitution, both in Article uh, 35, guarantees equality before the law and prohibits the discrimination on grounds of religion, race, language, and gender. And as well, Article 5 uh, guarantees freedom of worship and practice of religion. Uh, again, uh, uh, this is uh, just a, uh, an overview of this answer, but I really uh, uh, advise those organizations to look thoroughly at the law and the application of the law. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for sticking to the time limit. Um, okay, um, now um, I will move to the third group of four questions. Um, these questions are for the Republic of Korea, Spain, Switzerland, and, and Thailand. So I will read them all and uh, before giving you the floor. The first question is from, for Korea is from uh, Human Rights Watch. And the question is as follow. Will the Repub Republic of Korea show leadership system wide at the UN beyond their Human Rights Council seat by establishing a new standing body at the UN General Assembly to ensure there is a regular UN reporting to examine the linkages between peace and security and the human rights situation in DPRK? This is a question uh, from, from human rights. So uh, the next one is for Spain. And the question is from Pilar uh, Cristancho, an association, Association uh, Cuidadores de Personas. Uh, and the question is as follow, as a member of the council and therefore needing to commit to strong human rights standards, what will you do? to ensure that the Spanish states formulate laws to prevent and punish social occupational discrimination against skilled migrant workers. The next one is for Switzerland. And the question uh, is asked by public eye. Um, and the question is as follow. Switzerland likes to see itself as a leader in the protection and promotion of human rights and the rule of law. How do you respond to the fact that Switzerland is currently lagging significantly behind certain meaning on the legislative side and, and judicial side, uh, uh, lagging significantly behind certain international development, particularly in the areas of corporate responsibility? where unlike the EU, Switzerland still lacks comprehensive binding regulation on corporate responsibility and climate change and human rights 
especially in light of the recent statement by the Federal Council on the Kilma Seniorinen ruling of the European Court of Human Rights, which lack a strong and clear commitment to the international system of human rights protection as an integral, integral part of the Swiss rule of law. The last one is for, for Thailand. And the question is for Peace Rights Foundation. Jacob Goldberg, the new humanitarian and also the People's Empowerment Foundation. And the question is as follows. Thailand has held 48 Uyghur asyl, asylum seekers in immigration detention for more than 10 years. In addition to this, five persons detained have died in the past decades. As Thailand seeks membership of the Human Rights Council, will the royal Thai government guarantee to uphold the principle of non refoulement in relation to these Uyghur detained for the last 10 years? And what steps will the government take to ensure access to international protection and durable solutions for this group? Now I will turn to the state's representative, starting by uh, the Republic of Korea uh, for uh, the answers. You have the floor. Uh, <clears throat> Two minutes, please. Yes. Uh, thank you, moderator, and uh, thanks for the question uh, from uh, Human Rights Watch. Uh, I think this is a very uh, important question. Uh, Korean government is uh, deeply concerned uh, about uh, a very dire uh, human rights situation of the DPRK. In fact, uh, this year is actually 10th anniversary of the COI report. And uh, even uh, after the 10 years, uh, we found that uh, the TPRK's human rights situation remain uh, very uh, concerning. So the Korean uh, government uh, will strengthen uh, its efforts uh, to promote uh, human rights in TPRK in close cooperation with the international community uh, including the United Nations, uh, based on the uh, emphasis on the universal values. Uh, now, the government is actively participating in the discussion on uh, TPRK human rights situation at UN bodies and supporting the UN Special uh, Rapporteur, the UN Office for uh, uh, TPRK human rights uh, based in Seoul in carrying out uh, their uh, missions. And, and furthermore, uh, at the uh, upcoming uh, universal period review uh, of the DPRK in November, uh, uh, it will be the good opportunity to engage uh, in the issues through the UN mechanisms. Uh, we will actively participate in the process in order to raise uh, international awareness of the human rights situation, DPRK, and work towards uh, improving the situation. And also, I uh, appreciate uh, through the question Human Rights uh, Watch uh, recognize this uh, uh, linkage between the human rights uh, situation and uh, uh, the peace and security issue of the, the Korean Peninsula. Thank and you. In fact, the uh, DPRK's uh, continued uh, provocations and uh, uh, its development of the uh, weapons of mass destruction uh, has been only possible because there was a a uh, huge violation of the uh, human rights of the North Korean people through the forced labors and, and other other means. So I think it's important to recognize this linkage and highlight uh, this, this connection of these two important issues. And on the specific uh, way of how to address, uh, how to effectively address uh, uh, these issues, I think we, we need to uh, uh, focus on the uh, using uh, current uh, human rights mechanisms uh, within the United Nations systems. And also, uh, we would uh, like to explore uh, 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 further uh, better ways, more effective ways in addressing this issue uh, with uh, uh, also you, uh, civil societies and other, uh, other uh, partners. Thank you. Thank you. We are running out of time, so 
let's uh, be uh, keep to the time limit. Thank you. Um, now the uh, the floor is for Spain. Gracias, moderador, y gracias también por la. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm going to be watching the I'll try to answer very quickly because of the time of the question. The question was on the measures to be adopted for high level, high, highly qualified migration. We are in a situation where there will be no such discrimination. A migrant worker entering the labor market in Spain does not have the specific regulations they need to access the labor market. Uh, being equal to all others with the same professional level in Spain. They will be protected by our constitution. They will be constituted, protected by our labor rights. Spain is a member state of the workers' organization that has ratified the most conventions, the ILO. So this will be uh, working for the protection of all workers. You have the floor. Switzerland, you have the floor. Thank you Mr. much. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, sorry, I didn't uh, hear you. Uh, thank you very much uh, for the question, which had, uh, if I understood it correctly, two parts on the judgment of the European Court uh, of Human Rights concerning uh, the climate issues. Um, first of all, let me say that Switzerland uh, takes this whole architecture of the Council of Europe and the European Convention on Human Rights very seriously. The government looked at the judgment. Uh, it considers that the judgment was very broad and basically that Switzerland fulfills the climate policy requirements that are included in the judgment in the ruling. There will, however, be a detailed report on the implementation uh, of Switzerland by the Federal Department of Justice and Police uh, forthcoming. The second part of the question is uh, concerning the role and responsibility of private enterprises uh, with regard to promotion and protection of human rights. There is, on the one hand, a permanent conversation between government authorities and the enterprises on this issue, and we have new legal obligations also since 2022 that underline the role of uh, private companies with regard to the protection and promotion of human rights. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Ambassador. Now the floor is for Thailand. Thank you. In response to the question on the Uyghurs, um, Thailand is well aware that this issue is a subject of high interest and concern of many parties and organizations. We are also not complacent about the risk and possible effects of long-term detention. However, it is difficult for us to move one way or the other given the complexity of the situation. So we will continue to take care of them until a practical and viable solution for the group can be found. Meanwhile, relevant Thai authorities will continue to make efforts to improve their living conditions and to take care of their health and well-being physically and mentally. These efforts include allocating time for them to take reg regular exercise outdoor and gather for religious and cultural practices, as well as providing them with regular health checkup and psychosocial consultation through collaboration with Shiko Islam. The, um, the Act on Prevention and Suppression of Torture and Enforced Dis Disappearance, BE 2565, was <clears throat> entered into force in February 2023, and Article 13 stipulates the principle of non refoulement Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> there was a first group of questions for said not present, but uh, we are, since we are running out of time, uh, it will be difficult. Uh, I will not read with them. Uh, the organizers will will see the appropriate way to um, share these questions uh, with with them. So um, oh, 
likely the question the the, the organizers are saying that I should read them. So sorry, let me just read them then. So <clears throat> sorry for the uh, um, the, the the mistake. So uh, for Benin, um, the question is from Association Camerounaise pour la Défense des Droits de l'Homme, de Liberté du Bien-être, and um, it's a question for all states. How uh, do Benin intend to ensure freedom of expression, association, and peaceful assembly for all citizens, including marginalized groups? And uh, the second one is for Bolivia. Uh, and the question was asked from Coordinadora Nacional in, in Defensa de Territorios Indígenas, origin, Originarios Campesinos y Areas Protegidas y Centro de Documentación e Información uh, Bolivia. Um, and the question is as follows. What explanation does the Bolivian state give in response to the following two critical aspects, which are the results of its public policies, contrary to addressing climate change, which have an enormous global repercussion? A, uh, being among the top three countries with the highest rates of deforestation in the world and the highest amount of devastation of primary forests, either by deforestation or by uncontrolled fires. B, occupying the unwelcome first places among the countries importing mercury and with evidence of being the center of distribution of illegal mercury in South America, in open contradiction with its commitment assumed before the Minamata Convention. And for the DRC, and the question is from Alert Congolese pour l'environnement et les And the question is as follows In terms of respect for the rights and freedoms of local communities who are the victims of evictions due to mining investment, what major legal and institutional reforms are planned to respect and ensure respect for human rights? After the introduction of three pieces of legislation, mainly the law on the protection and responsibility of human rights defenders, the digital code and the press law. These laws are more repressive, liberticidal, and unsuited to democratic and social protection objectives. What measures and reform is the DRC planning to facilitate access to justice, access to energy, and ensuring that these rights are respected in order to guarantee economic growth and reduce poverty. And for Ethiopia, the question is from Human Rights Watch. Ethiopia took unprecedented steps to resist and undermine international scrutiny of rights violations in Ethiopia, including by UN Human Rights Council mandated and regional mechanism. As a council member, how will Ethiopia support international scrutiny of abuses and include, including domestically? For the Gambia, and the question is from Human Rights Watch, the Gambian government's consideration of a bill reversing the ban of the 2015 FGM, female genital mutilation, is deeply troubling for women's rights. Can the government commit to protecting the rights of the Gambian girls and women by rejecting and proposal rejecting any proposal to reverse or weaken the 2015 FGM ban? And for Kenya, the question is from Minority Rights Group. And the question is as follows, does Kenya consider the human rights obligations stemming from the jurisprudence of the African Commission and the African Court as integral part of its vision towards advancement of human rights? And if so, which steps the government is planning to take to ensure the full implementation of the mentioned decision and ensure a human rights approach in nature 
conservation policies. The last one is for Saudi Arabia. It's a question uh, from Gulf Center for Human Rights and Al Quds for Human Rights. And the question is in relation to detained and disappeared human rights defenders. And the question is as follow, will Saudi Arabia release all political prisoners charged with contacting human rights organizations, organizations as well as all the detained women human rights defenders who were heavily sentenced in some unfair trial for tweets and and where are human rights defenders dr mohammed al khatani isa al nukhaifi who were forcibly disappeared on 24th october 2022 and red cross worker abdurrahman al saddan who was forcibly disappeared since 12 March 2018. This is the, the end of the question. Now I will move to uh, the conclusion. I thank the states, the candidate states, for the responses to these questions. Excellencies, distinguished delegates, dear colleagues, we hope this discussion has helped all to gain a better knowledge and understanding of the vision for membership and human rights commitment of some of the candidates for the Human Rights Council. We know from past experiences that this event promotes trust between HRC candidates, states, civil society, and the United Nations and contribute to strengthening international dialogue on human rights. As we continue to address the challenges confronting human rights and multilateralism in the context of global multiple crises, we trust that this year's exchange has offered this, the same inspiration and enhanced the spirit of cooperation. On behalf of co-organizers, I thank all candidates for their time and willingness to engage transparently on human rights issues and the audience for your engaged participation. Thank you for your cooperation and thank you for your attention. It was my great pleasure to uh, moderate this event on behalf of the ASG, uh, Ilze uh, Cheris uh, Brandis. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, the, I will give back the floor to the organizers for the end of this meeting. Thank you very much.